I guess some of the issues I'm going to be talking about today are looking at this idea of the role of the composer in the 21st century. Now, of course, here we are in Munich and we're in Germany, and one of my favorite composers is Wagner. Um, in the 19th century, he came up with a term called Gesamtkunstwerk, which simply means total artwork. In the 21st century, what we've seen um, in the last several years is the rise of the app. And what's been fascinating with the way that apps have transformed the creative act is essentially that there are tools within tools within tools. So what I'd like to do is call up the screen uh, for my iPad uh, for a moment. And I'll just kind of walk you guys through some of the material that I'm going to kind of riff on for a moment, and then we'll uh, go into a composition. So, OK. Um, what you're seeing behind me is essentially a, sc a screen that most consumers uh, who have smartphones have at this point. But the idea is that if you're thinking about 21st century, we're looking at a tool that can be many other tools. I'll show you an example. Now, the idea of the, play the playlist in the 19th and 20th century, when I say the playlist, you're thinking about the album. But what happens when you think about the 21st century is it's about associative context. Now, this is an app that some friends of mine developed that I like to use to kind of highlight this idea of associative memory and the way people play with sound. Um, if you think about the album in the 20th century, the idea of the record cover sleeve was kind of the basic vocabulary of visual music. When you think of the record cover sleeve, um, there's a gentleman by the name of Alex Steinweiss who invented it. But what I want to do is pull you into this idea of um, how people think about sound in a 21st century word cloud kind of format. So say, for example, if I'm thinking of a song, any song, there's always associative memories. And if you think about memory in the 21st century, um, this is something that we're seeing as how processes that um, essentially are looking at more and more larger scale, more and more density, and how human beings organize the density, that is what I like to think of as composition and strategy. So this app here is essentially playing uh, with any of the songs that begin with uh, certain words and patterns, and you just pull them straight in and create uh, patterns and layers. So when I went to Antarctica, one of the first things that came to mind was the idea of the phonograph and landscape. Uh, in the 19th century, when Edison came up with the idea of the phonograph, it simply meant two words, phonetics of graphology, writing with sound. So as we move into the 21st century, there's two other figures I want to invoke. Johannes Kepler, um, who wrote in 1611 a really incredible essay called Six Sides of a Snowflake. Uh, one day in 1611, he was on his way home, and a snowflake landed on his sleeve, and he was really stunned by the geometry of the ice. And so he went home and wrote this essay that essentially was looking at mathematics and nature. Um, and if you think about complexity and what they call emergent properties in complexity and sound, um, he's one of the first what they call natural philosophers to really understand the density of how mathematics could be applied to uh, natural phenomena. So when you think about the idea of nature and art, um, this is one of my favorite pieces. Um, what I did was take a studio to Antarctica and went to several of the main ice fields to think about landscape. And what the problem that I noticed over and over when I was there was the scale. Um, if you think about it, what you're seeing here is an entire mountainside. Um, and I was hiking. Uh, I carried a backpack with high-definition cameras and studio equipment up to the side of mountains and set up a studio to come up with compositions. And what happened is I was thinking about the idea of tools. Um, there's another really interesting inventor named Adolf Sax, who some of you may know is the inventor of the saxophone. So in the 1840s and 1850s, it's fascinating because this was a tool that was essentially a military instrument. Uh, military bands would use it to play. But without Adolf Sax, you wouldn't be able to think of someone like Charlie Parker or John Coltrane. But the tool itself defined the medium. So what I want to do today is walk you guys through some of the issues that I think about when I look at the idea of landscape and sound. Um, when I was in Antarctica, some of the first things that came to mind was the scale. And when you think about ice, um, one of the first things you have to realize is it's a very mathematical material. And I worked with a gentleman by the name of Brian Green, who's a very renowned quantum physicist, to come up with this idea of looking at complexity in sound and transposing that into composition. So there's some amusing issues here about vocabulary of ice and global warming. So what you're going to hear today is a kind of interpretation of geometry. And what happens whenever you see a piece of ice is essentially you're seeing a kind of a distillation of geometry. And what happens here is that you're looking at a hexagonal, what they call recursive logic. The pattern is hexagons made straight into um, a kind of a crystal structure and made into patterns and permutations. So what I want to do today is walk you through some of that from the viewpoint of the role of a composer. Um, the musicians who are with me were are recommended by um, the DLD. There's some very renowned uh, violinists and cellists from Munich. So thank you. 
And what I want to do is show you some of this idea of new tools. Um, if you go back to the history of sound in the 20th century, there was an uneasy tension between rhythm and noise. If you look at Schoenberg, if you look at Stravinsky, after World War II, Europe went on a crisis of composition. Uh, noise became part of the vocabulary. But at the same time, earlier, the avant-garde uh, with people like Luigi Russolo, uh, who's a really renowned uh, theoretician of sound, came up with this idea of the sound system. So in 1915, he wrote a book called The, Alt the Art of Noise. And this has been one of the most influential texts of the avant-garde in sound in the 20th and now 21st century. So with the arte del rumore, the art of noise, um, Luigi Russolo wanted to create this idea of a portrait of a city. Now, the Italian futurists, um, to me at least, were some of the most interesting because they thought of the city itself as a landscape of, of tension and chaos. Uh, what I wanted to do as a composer, especially looking at hip-hop, was think about the idea of recursive logic and loops. Now, there's a gentleman by the name of Douglas Hofstetter who has a great book called Godel Escher Bach. And what one of those, you know, those three names invoke is loops. So what you're going to hear tonight is a composition made out of the sound of ice, recursive logic, and the idea of pattern recognition. Hopefully, anyone out there who's into sampling, you'll hear some of the riffs and motifs. And um, I've been working with Apple uh, to come up with an iPad app um, that lets you be able to take uh, bits and pieces from anything you have on your iTunes library. And it's, an, it's called DJ Spooky. It's an iTunes app. And we've had over 9 million downloads of the app. In fact, me and Bjork are probably only the two only artists in the top 100 of app downloads. So I wanted to figure out some fun ways to think of new tools, new ways of looking at sampling and collage, and how a composer would invoke the idea of landscape. So what I did was work with Music Soft Arts and Apple to come up with this idea of the 21st century DJ. So what you're going to hear is essentially I've taken the idea of the phonograph, again, phonetics of graphology, writing with sound, and made it become an app. So I'll just do a quick demo of one of my favorite uh, composers, James Brown. Say, for example, if I wanted to pull him uh, straight from the iTunes library, we'll go to, to DJ Mixer like that, pull it into the library, assign it to a record player, and be able to create a playlist that's not a playlist, but an interactive touch-based screen. <laughs> Okay, so that was James Brown. <laughs> so in hip hop, we call that a scratch routine. <laughs> so uh, what I want to do is kind of update that from the generation of the beat poets. If you look at William S. Burroughs, if you look at Jack Kerouac, in the 1950s and 1960s, America went through a process of thinking about collage and language. Language itself became the form of how poets and writers started to really play with the idea of sequence and linearity. So what I'm going to do is pull you into an Antarctic landscape in sound and invoke one of my favorite composers, a gentleman by the name of John Cage. Now, in 1939, John Cage had a composition called Imaginary Landscape. And essentially, the audience, much like you all, came into a room much like this, and there was a whole bunch of record players on stage. And the audience was very mad and wanted their money back. They said, where's the band? And John Cage said, well, there is no band. It's just the records. So for a 21st century update, what I'm going to do is do a live remix of some of my compositions generated by the uh, Escher kind of compositions looking at this idea of Antarctic landscape. And hopefully, you guys will go with this idea of geometry and sound. And hopefully, think of it as a rhythm and a pattern. So you guys ready? Okay. <laughs> 
So, um, what I just want to say is, in general, as you move further and further into the 21st century, so many of the issues that we've been looking at today are how digital media are reshaping the creative act. And I think that artists have one thing to say, which is essentially that the imagination is the ultimate renewable resource. So, thank you very much.